Welcome, I'm Bri the Builder, and today I am going to be painting up these three spare weapons for these armature knights. Um, so from Watt Corp Designs, I have two chain cannons, right matched pairs, right and left, um, and a thermal cannon. So these are basically small versions of weapons that I also have for the Acastus Knight that was that's being built up. So um, I'm going to paint these up and get this project taken care of. So I'm going to be basically using, um, well, for this, actually only colors from Citadel. So I have, um, let's see, I have Abaddon Black or Abaddon Black, uh, Averland Sunset, Lead Belcher. Uh, this is Brass Scorpion and this is Rune Lord Brass. Um, and once I have those all placed, all my base coats done, um, pretty much all of the washes will be between um, Agrax Earthshade and Nuln Oil. So it should actually go together, or the painting should go pretty quickly. Um, there may be some adjustments or modifications along the way. Um, and everything is being painted, if you can see these guys back here in the Iron Warriors color scheme um, and for me instead of doing all of the gold trim with iron warriors that I've seen a lot of uh, that to me is a little bit over the top I like going with the brass colors in there it just feels a lot more kind of realistic I guess as realistic as these guys can be um, but these weapons are all magnetized uh, the bodies are magnetized and really more than anything it just allows for posability so, right, there's no real reason for the bodies to be magnetized other than just allowing them to turn. It's just cool. So, with that said, um, I think we're going to pretty much time lapse this and I will start painting and we'll knock these out. really good brush um, I would suggest that um, you learn from my mistakes uh, and over the years I have tried to make sure I now keep a separate brush for anything I do for metallics so I've got this nice army painter wargamer detail brush for almost all of the real detail work I do um, which used to be <clears throat> this brush uh, which I've actually had for a couple of years even though it's somewhat beat uh, it's actually missing a lot of bristles but it's a Winsor Newton Series 7 it's a really nice sable brush um, and I made the mistake of using it for metallics and what the metallics do are basically as the metallics sometimes dry into the brushes a little bit when you go to clean it um, the metallic paint can actually like cut the bristles just a little bit 
and after a while you end up breaking and losing bristles. So keeping a brush that may not be quite as high quality for painting metallics with, uh, that you may have to buy a new one more frequently, might be okay. Either that or you have a good brush um, and just try to make sure you clean it really frequently and don't let any of the metallic dry in the bristles at all. Otherwise it will start to cause problems. Um, like I said though, this brush is still probably over a year old. Um, well, probably about a year old. I think I got it for Christmas a year ago. So, and it is almost Christmas now. So yeah, I mean, this brush is still working, even though it is a little bit beat up. This army painter brush is hopefully, if I keep um, my mind about me while I'm painting, this one will never touch metallics, right? But sometimes, um, well, what happened originally is I just forgot. So, while well, these, I think, are pretty close to that abandoned black base coat being dry, or dry enough, um, I don't need to, I don't think, hold it in those spots to start with. Um, I should be able to hold and get some of the other things done. Now, all that said, I don't think I'm going to be using this brush at all because I think pretty much everything's going to be metallics. Um, I was thinking about the Avalon Sunset and the hazard stripes but i don't tend to do that on weapons so i mean if you look at the current weapons um there's no hazard stripes on them i don't paint that on any of the bolters of the the minis um let me grab a couple All right, so when I'm painting these guys, I tend to focus more on the hazard stripes being on the shins. Um, and I don't frequently put them on shoulder pad and shin. I usually do one or the other and kind of designate squads that way. Um, but shins are actually a lot easier to keep hazard stripes looking like stripes. Right, because from a certain direction that looks great, and from other directions it looks kind of strange. So hazard stripes on curved surfaces can be a challenge, but again, depending on the surface and the angle of it, right, they can look great. So I think shins tend to be a little bit better for that, like that one back there underneath the cape. So, as far as that goes, I guess I won't really be needing um, the Avalon Sunset. So, then, a little, let's see, I'll probably like to start with metallics that would essentially be the furthest back. So on the barrels here, these barrels are going to be lead belcher. Uh, and then the break in between will be um, with the, uh, let's see, the rune lore brass, the lighter brass color. And that way I can pick out some of these trim elements with the darker brass color try to kind of differentiate some of the colors in there so I will start with these little covers back here I'll do with the lighter brass as well uh, these covers probably lead belcher
So I think all of our base colors are done. I'm gonna try doing almost a, a heat fade um, on at least this portion of that heat shield. So it would normally go from blue uh, to purple to kind of yellow on aluminum. Um, so we're just gonna basically mimic that even though it's not aluminum, right? I don't know what it is. So blue from the Drakenhoff Nightshade, purple from Druki Violet, Druchi, I'm not sure. And then more of a yellow from the Seraphim Sepia. Um, hopefully in some nice thin layers, I can kind of build this up and get it to look pretty cool. So, should probably, I'm gonna get my palette back out. Don't normally need the wet palette for shades, um, but for this, I think it might make things a little easier. Uh, so here, let's actually, we're gonna clean that. And really, in order to thin down shade paints, uh, you want to use something like Lamian Medium. Um, this is for thinning either paints to make them into shade paints or for thinning shade paints. So we'll take a couple brushfuls of this. And then I can grab a brush full of that. waiting for that first coat of uh, shade to dry, that blue nightshade, um, I went ahead and actually mixed up a little bit of the purple and the sepia tone, uh, or the druchy, druchy, not sure, violet, and the seraphim sepia. Um, and I mixed those with also a little bit of the lamy and medium. So, we'll do another, definitely need another coat of blue.
All right, now that barrel discoloration can sit. That looks pretty cool. It's actually a nice amount of discoloration. I mean, it's relatively convincing. Um, so after that's fully dry, I'll come back and do the rest of the washes. All right, so I think before I do the last of the washes here, um, I'm gonna do a little bit of a dry brush with some iron breaker. I'm just gonna break them up a little bit. Um, it's a lot of brass texture. So we'll do a little of this, get some highlights going. So I'm just really getting off most of the paint. And then Agrax Earthshade. Um, this is gonna kind of dull everything down and make it look really beat up and used, um, which is exactly what we want. Uh, Iron Warriors and the whole, at least in my opinion, idea of Warhammer um, is is constant war. You're not really gonna be taking time to polish your weapons and armor. You're just gonna use it until it falls apart. So I like dirty, beat up, scratched, abused. It just looks more realistic and I find it far more fun to paint um, than the super fine detail edge highlighting that you see, which is gorgeous, um, but to me it just doesn't really seem to fit the concept of Warhammer. Um, it's just too, too clean. I mean, it doesn't seem like this stuff should be parade ready. Now we're gonna need to load up a little more. All right, now the Agrax Earthshade is dry, so I am just gonna add a bit of Nuln Oil, um, the black shade, really just between the barrels. Um, and you may notice I also changed the surface here. Um, I think the white stripes on that cutting mat were really kind of blowing out the contrast. So this is what the auto exposure, which in spots is a little bright now um but as i try to mess with the exposure i don't know it actually this works really well for most things so we'll see it actually does i think help be able to see that there's some color in there 
but the contrast does get a little wonky at times with the exposure set auto. So we'll see, I think for some stuff, um, this black foam core will be a good background. All right, so this I'm gonna try to be kind of controlled so I have a smaller brush. I really just want it kind of in between the barrels. I have to get a little more than that. Well, yeah, let's take a look. So this guy, doesn't really matter which, I'm just gonna take both his weapons off uh, and then replace those with both of the chain cannons. I mean, that's, here, let me zoom out just a little. That's pretty badass. All right, the shoulders are gonna have a hard time holding those out. This one can kind of, but they're pretty heavy. So that's pretty cool still. All right, and then this one can go on either side, doesn't really matter. So it's nice, all the weapons are completely interchangeable. So, and that also looks quite cool on there. Matches up stylistically, all the brass. So there's a couple of Knight Armagers with custom weapons. Very fun little paint project. All right, those, those custom weapons from Watt Corp are very cool, uh, very well done. All right, well, thanks for watching.